Good evening, everyone. The Gladstone Braves defeated Gwynn 49 to 12 to open the 2012 high school football season. But the Model Towners definitely had other ideas on how to begin the 2013 campaign. Let's go to McCormick Field. A little bit of a rainy night. Umbrellas out. And here's the opening kickoff. And Gwynn's Mike Rector takes the ball on the 20. He's going to go to the far side. The next thing you know, hey, he's free down the sideline. This is going to be good for 80 yards and a touchdown. And a model towners open the season with a 6-0 lead. The conversion was missed. Okay, so let's get kick the ball over to Gladstone. On a bounce, Riley Ballard will make the catch on the 24. And he, believe it or not, is going to do the exact same thing. 76 yards for the touchdown. Braves also missed a two-point conversion. So we're tied at six, less than 45 seconds into the game, give or take. Second quarter, Gwynn up a touchdown. Justin Nyquist to Owen DeVoe. And he is going to pick up 10 yards, tackle down about the three-yard line. Earlier, DeVoe had an interception for a touchdown. Luke Sanabi gives Gwynn a two-touchdown lead. That made it 18-6. to six. That was the halftime score. That also was the final score. Gwynn is 1-0 and oh with an 18-6 victory over Gladstone. Let's go to Escanaba, where the Eskimos open their season against the Alpena Wildcats. First quarter action, and Alpena is in business. After the high snap, Jordan Ferguson gets the ball, breaks a couple tackles, and oh my goodness, he has lots of green grass in front of him, and Escanaba is not going to catch him. 80 yards on the score, two-point conversion, good Wildcats with an 8 nothing lead. Escanaba coach Jim Hansen calls a timeout to settle things down. Later in the first half, Travis Heller finds Cameron Beversloos, and Sluice is on the loose. 81 yards for the score. Beversloos gets it in the end zone, and Escanaba kicks the extra point, so it's 8-7. Then, Tyler Pintar, the Alpena quarterback, will find Josh Dell. 16 yards for the touchdown. 15-7 Wildcats at the half. 15-7 the final. Alpena gets the victory. Let's go to the Copper Country. Lance and Houghton and Jimmy Beaker burrows into the end zone to give the Purple Hornets the opening lead. Gremlins trying to respond in quarter number one. Ben Collar looking deep. Sam Bethencourt makes the catch. A nice cut right there. This will be a good gainer down to the 30-yard line, but the Gremlins could not find the end zone. Second quarter, Collar's at it again, and he's going to find Jimmy Beaker quite wide open. That's good for a touchdown. And the Purple Hornets roll to the victory tonight by the score of 48-14. to 14. On the scoreboard, Lakeland and Hubble, no trouble with Barrick at 59-6. Northern Elite is 2-0 after defeating Norway 40-22. North Central, of course, a shutout over Ontonagon, 48-0. Newberry, 32. Rudyard, nothing. And Charlevoix in the win column, 20-0 over St. Ignace. To eight-man football, Superior Central entertaining Grimley first quarter action for the Superior Central Cougars. That's Elijah Passanen. Nicky, Nick Mackey, wide open. 77 yards for the touchdown, two-point good, 8 nothing Cougars. Next series, third and goal from the two. And Caleb McCurchy will, yes, cross the goal line. Two-point good, tied at eight. And the ensuing kickoff, and for you, those of you who know me long enough, ensuing usually means something good is going to happen on the kickoff. It's Mackey. Eh, goodbye. 80 yards. Cougars take the lead 14 to 8. And Mackey would account for three touchdowns in the first half, including the next one you'll see. And Superior Central is on the board at 1 0 with a 46 to 22 victory over the Brimley Bays. Also in eight-man football tonight, Rapid River, 44-12 over you in Trout Creek. And Portland St. Patrick, 30, Angadine, 8. And the score of the night, Cedarville edges Hosen. I understand the Trojans had to win the rally to win the game, 42-40. to From today, Manistee over Ishpeming, three sets to none. Ironwood, three. Ontonagon, one. Kingsford defeats Stevenson 3 to 1 and Forest Park over Kearney Dado 3 0. Sunny skies are nice, but not when temperatures are in the mid 80s, at least for the runners at the Marquette Challenge cross country race at Prescott Park. Pacing was almost more important today than speed. We're off at the start and a clean start. Nobody falling down, didn't have to restart this one. And a group of girls try to buy for the lead early. But by the band shell, it was apparent that 
Lindsey Rudden was going to win this race. 19 minutes and 55 seconds to be exact. Amber Hubner of Marquette was second, 20 minutes and 17 seconds. And Kayla Martish of the Red Hats third. Gladstone's Leah Wolfler was fourth. For the boys, hey, somebody get me that ice cream cone. Doggone guy walked across the course 10 seconds before it started. I didn't even get one. We're underway in the boys race. Nate Carey of Kingsford with the early lead and he would have a good race, but Marquette's duo of Cole Rebold and Lance Rambo would take after take over after that and Rebold would be your winner in 17 minutes and 27 seconds. Rambo second 1739. Third place went to Eric Kuzno of Escanaba and fourth was to Nate Carey on the results. On the girls' side, Marquette with a score of 20, placing six in the top 13. Escanaba was second and Gladstone third. On the boys' side, Marquette just held off Escanaba by five points with Nagani third. To tennis, not exactly a great day, but at least they played early enough in the morning so it wasn't too bad for Iron Mountain and Ishpeming. That's Katie Bruley in the far court for the Mountaineers who's going to hit one. Back to Gabby Crowley of Ishpeming, and then she's going to hit one to me. Yes, caught with the left hand. <laughs> Camera stays reasonably steady. Back the other way after changing court sides of the court. Bruley is going to get the point here as Gabby Crowley hits it into the net. Bruley won the match 6-2 and 6-love. At first doubles, a good day for Libby Doney and Haley Thompson of Ishpeming. They won in three sets, 6-3 in the third. And Ishpeming took the team score by the count of 5-3. On the scoreboard, Kingsford defeated Westwood this afternoon 7-1.